Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, we're gonna be doing a long-term review of the Langmuir Crossfire Pro uh, plasma cutting table. And we are going to be fixing a much needed fix that I should have done at the very start of owning this table. And we will get into some of the information about that of what I did to take and fix the nasty leak that all of these beds have problems with. To get right into it, uh, I am not being paid by Langmuir Systems. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. Uh, so uh, be advised, there you go, full disclosure. I purchased this table with my own money and had it shipped and put it together and I have built since built a CNC business around using this table. But let's get into some of the pros about this table. One of the first pros about this table is it is economical. I'll put a price up here on the screen for you of what its current rate is. Obviously, your shipping, you know, sales, stuff like that will vary. Economicalness of this table really allows there to be a lot of accessibility for a uh, you know, for a metal artist or anybody who's looking to take and get into the CNC space and plasma cutting, you know, building bumpers, custom car parts, you name it, um, you know, or doing like I do, which is making uh, custom blanks for blacksmiths. So, you know, it's a great entry level option to take and get into. They have a cheaper table. Um, they have a much cheaper table and it's modular and they go up to the Crossfire Pro and now they even have a Crossfire XR which is a big 4x8 table that they have produced and come out with. Uh, one, one interesting thing about it is they've kept it to be a kit format so it arrives to you in a bunch of little boxes uh, to keep the cost down of freighting and stuff like that and, and you know you have to kind of assemble it. So one of the, uh, the next pros other than the economical nature of this table is the fact that you build it with your own two hands, basically. And so there's not one piece of this that you haven't been involved with uh, from moment one to take and put together. So if you've put it together once, you know how to take it back apart if something needs to be fixed. And you will need to do a lot of maintenance on this table, it being at the one of these, uh, you know, being at the much economical and cheaper option. So let's talk about the pro in the Crossfire Pro uh, terminology, if you will. So uh, this, I've said before in previous uh, previous videos that this is really more like a like a prosumer or consumer grade, just slightly below a professional grade. Uh, plasma cutting table, and I still believe and hold wholeheartedly into that opinion. That being said, though, over the last course of three and a half, coming up on four years now that I have had this plasma bed in operation here at the shop, I have literally cut about 80 to 90 tons worth of material. So that is a lot of material that I've ran through this bed. Uh, some of the things that I've had to do, I've had to replace all the ball screws on it. I've had to replace the backlash nuts on it. I've had to freshen up the Z axis. I've replaced multiple bearings in the XYZ axis. I've ran through all those and it's because I've literally cut millions of miles of linear inches on this table. So even though it is a consumer grade for the price, you can get into the professional side of things with this table. It's just very, very low end entry level. So why do I say that it's the low end entry level to being a, or more of a prosumer? It's not really, you know, it's, it's the high end of a consumer grade unit. The reason why I say that is because of some of the cut accuracy issues that you run into with this table, especially when you start getting into trying to cut thicker plate, you do run into issues with their Z axis. Their Z axis is really, really weak. Um, it's got too much flex in it that as much as I've tried to tune, uh, trim it out, um, it still has too much flex in it to put a professional plasma cutting torch on it. This table is really designed to run with their uh, razor weld, I think is what they call it, their plasma cutter uh, brand that they specify or that they prefer to use with them. And it's made to really use with hand torches. I have a Hypertherm 65 Power Max plasma cutter. 
I can recommend that to absolutely anybody. That machine has been flawless. It is a perfect running machine and it cuts smooth, clean, and absolutely wonderful. So I can give uh, Hypertherm big props on that. Of course, they are the industry standard if you're going to be getting into professional stuff. So let's get into one of the biggest downsides with this table. One of the biggest downsides to this table, and that's what we have fixed um, in this video, or hopefully we have fixed. We'll see how <laughs> we'll see how well that'll go. Only time will tell. But these water pans on these tables, they come in two separate halves. They're two stainless steel halves. I hated them from the beginning for that. I think it's absolutely retarded. The manufacturer created two halves of a water pan. Some people say they've never had a problem out of it. I call bogus on that. And other people, they can't stop them from leaking. Well, mine started leaking from moment one, did everything right by the instructions, put all the, put everything together to the letter. I don't make this kind of purchase without doing everything by the book when it comes to the instructions did everything exactly like you're supposed to do, and it started leaking day one of use. So this plant pan is completely faulty and flawed. Uh, so my suggestion is if you can't braise it like what I've done in this video or have it TIG welded together, my suggestion is, is you pay a fabricator out there to go ahead and break you up an actual pan to fit this that is much sturdier and is not going to have the leaking issues that this pan has. Um, that being said, you may want to take and purchase this, this table and exclude the water pan option. It's really not worth it for the extra cost. Uh, the water pan's garbage. The water pan's garbage. I'll say it, hot take, it's garbage. So this thing has been leaking all over my shop floor for the last three years. I've kind of put up with it, put up with it. I've gooped more silicone across the top of it. I put like a little deflector shield on top to try to help protect that silicone and it's, it's peeled up. It's done different things over the time. And so finally I said enough is enough. I'm gonna go ahead and braise this pan shut. And so that's what we did. So the braze that I was using is this coating brazen rod, brazing rod by Lincoln Electric, hashtag not a sponsor. I'm, I'm not getting paid for any of this, uh, but there will be an affiliate link to these down in the description if you do decide to try this process yourself for your own. Uh, these are a welding position of horizontal and vertical. It was one pound little tube here and they're eighth inch, but they're a flux coated bronze. Um, uh, I'll read a little bit is general purpose copper based brazing alloy rod used extensively for gas brazing steel, other copper alloys, cast iron, nickel alloys, and stainless steel. No additional flux is required. Preheating is recommended in some applications. And what they mean by some applications is most likely in cast iron. You have to preheat the cast iron before you get into it and really start brazing. Otherwise you end up creating more cracks elsewhere. This <laughs> was not for the faint of heart. Um, there is many things I would do differently if I were going to braise this pan together again. I would have clamped it up a lot more with blocks, um, with like heat sink blocks around where I was going to braise the rod up. And it's a bit different than the brazing that I have done before. Um, the brazing that I have done before, the brazing rod really wets into the surface and flows through the joint. Um, and this acts more of like a TIG rod. So it doesn't really, it'll wet into the surface, but it doesn't flow completely through the joint. Uh, it more or less just stays on the surface or on the top, which it took me a little bit to figure that out. And therefore I had excess heat dumping into the thin uh, pan, which was creating some really big heat warps that I had to take care of. Um, that was a real pain and, and I really struggled with that with doing this process. But I've got it all together now and it's absolutely holding water and I don't think I'm gonna have any problems out of this in the future. If I do, hey, I'll have another video and I'll let you know about it. One thing I will say about brazing, any type of brazing or welding of any sort, the rule is as follows. You wanna make sure that you keep everything clean as possible. So we spent a long time grinding and cleaning and wire wheeling and making sure where I was going to braise was nice and impeccably clean. And I do suggest that you do that before you start the process. To braise this up was simple as basically I was chasing the rod with the torch tip. Usually it's the other way around. You know, the braise follows the heat. And then I would just 
basically just like a TIG welder, I'd heat up a little area, jump up onto the rod, heat down, jump, heat, jump, not quite like a TIG welder, but I'd bring a little bit of the braze down into the pool that I was heating up and go right across there. And once I got the knack of it, I was able to fly across the pan and do pretty good. Uh, I did have to do uh, some heating and beating to the thin sidewalls. I developed some warps and little puckers and buckles because of all of that tension being released because of my initial dumping too much heat into it, like I said before. Um, so, you know, again, not for the faint of heart. If I were to do it all over again, I would clamp the entire seam knowing that I wasn't going to have any flow through. I would have clamped the whole entire seam, seam up with some heat sink blocks to each side and also to prevent any sort of distortion while brazing that joint. That's one thing I would do differently, um, you know, if I had to do this in the future. So uh, hopefully this will hold up well for me. If it doesn't hold up well, I do have stainless steel uh, and I do cut, I do CNC plasma cut stainless and things here at the shop. So what I will most likely do is I will break up my own plan and I will just braze the corners using this rod. Um, and I think that will work out really, really well. Again, I can clamp it up good and solid where I'm not getting a bunch of puckering and warping and uh, just make a really heavy duty pan. Um, that being said, uh, basically long-term review, long, long story short, let's talk about it. Uh, I would recommend this bed to just about anyone. I think it's a really good thing. Tech support's been amazing. It's really easy peasy to get a hold of someone. There is like scads of online forums. There's entire Facebook groups with really helpful, really knowledgeable dudes out there that can help you with anything you're doing with. So that is a huge thing to take away some of the stress and anxiety you may have about starting something new like getting into CNC plasma cutting. Um, I have found that to be super helpful myself, as where as some of the other plasma cutters out there, although they are sturdier and better equipment, um, and, and you know they're better equipment, and they're going to last longer, they're going to do more things more precisely for you. I will say for the light laying mirror, there's a ton of support around it, and there's a whole community around these beds, which is an awesome thing. So you're just not out there when you're having a bed issue, you're talking to some some tech support guy that really couldn't give a rip about you. Um, there's a lot of people and a lot of resource that you can get to. So I find it to be a pretty awesome community. So I would recommend this to anybody as a great starter option. So the question always comes up, Roy, what would you prefer to take and get into since the Langmuir? Um, you know, you say you want to upgrade from it. In my last video, I talked, I want to upgrade from this. The current bed that I want to get into or that I'm looking to get into my next table that I've been saving up for is going to be probably most likely an STV CNC. Again, not sponsored. That, that I don't, you know, I'm going to be probably purchasing the bed full price um, unless they want to get in touch, get in touch, sponsor this, this Wabu. <laughs> if you're listening, somebody from STV CNC. Um, but yeah, most likely I, I've done the most research on them and they've got a really good, uh, really good table out there with all the kind of the premium features that I am looking for in a table since owning this one. So most likely that will be the next big upgrade for me is going down that route. But who knows, maybe I will bail out and I will go with the much cheaper option of the Crossfire um, XR, right? The you know, you've got the Langmuir Systems XR plasma table now that has a big old four by eight bed on it. I might try that one first and then move on up to the STV CNC, but we will see how it goes in the future. Anyways, I hope this long-term review is helpful to you. I know there's a lot of jawing in it and uh, I, I do hope it was helpful for you. If you are considering purchasing one of these tables, I will leave a non-affiliated link down in the description down below. You can go check it out. Uh, that will just redirect you to their website and read up on everything like that. Um, be sure to go ahead and check them out and see what see what they have to offer. Like I said, if you're trying to get into this, I think it's a pretty good table and it will do you pretty well. And there is a lot of online support around them. So that's it. God bless each and every last one of you. Hope you all enjoyed this video and we will catch you on the next one. Bye now.